GeForce Now has quickly become my go-to cloud gaming service. More than that, I would even say that it's become my go-to gaming solution. I can legitimately say that I spend more time playing my games through GeForce Now than playing them on my gaming PC or PlayStation 5. And this wasn't always the case. In the past two years, I probably spent more time playing cloud gaming on Stadia than anything else, but at no point did I actually spend more time playing games on the cloud than my local hardware. And that's because multiplayer gaming has always been my bread and butter. And while Stadia's latency was decent, it wasn't perfect. Not to mention, the lack of a user base made it really hard to find others to play multiplayer games with. GeForce Now at the time was solid, but it wasn't as good as Stadia in my opinion. Both the picture quality and latency fell just slightly behind it, and even though I have a massive library of PC games, I still chose to play them on my local PC. But once the 3080 tier came into the picture, it flipped that script around, and that should say a lot about just how good it is. When I play a multiplayer game, I don't feel like I'm being held back. In terms of picture quality, the games look fantastic and better than they do on my local PC, and the resolution resolution that's being streamed to me matches my native resolution on my monitor. Throw in the fact that my monitor does support the 120Hz feature of GeForce Now, well, that deal just gets even better. And look, I'm not trying to tell you that this is the perfect solution. If you happen to have a 3080 in your gaming PC, you're probably going to have a better experience playing on that local PC. But if you find yourself in a position like me where you're stuck with an older GPU, for example I have an RTX 2070, the 3080 performance boost is quite significant. All that said, graphics and latency aren't the only reason I'm using GeForce Now a whole lot more lately there's another very important reason as to why, and that's storage. And just to be clear, this isn't a benefit exclusive to GeForce Now in the cloud gaming space, but cloud gaming overall. It's super nice not having to worry about space and storage limitations. It feels like every big new game that comes out, I have to delete something from my PC to make sure I have enough room. And the same story applies to my PS5. That storage space is full unless I want to go out and buy another $200 SSD. Not having to care or worry about this sort of thing is just simply amazing. And it's a benefit that only really starts to set in once you actually give cloud gaming a chance and give it a go for a continuous amount of time. But the thing that makes the deal even sweeter on GFN is the fact that every game is just the PC version of the game. That means my friend group that I have in the gaming PC space remains there, and if they want to play a game, I can hop in and join them without having to worry whether or not the game supports crossplay. Better yet, I have a recent example with World of Warships. A buddy of mine is really into that game, and I've never really cared for it much and never bothered to download it because I thought it'd be a waste of space. But I saw that it was on GeForce Now and he seemed to be really adamant about giving it a go, so I told him sure why not. One week later, I now have a tier 10 Russian carrier and am working my way toward a tier 10 Japanese battleship. Turns out the game can be quite addicting even if you're not into ships. Who would have thought? One thing I really want to make clear here though, is that I guarantee you I would have never played this game were it not for the fact that it was available on GeForce Now. And with the fact that there's so many free to play games on GeForce Now, I've actually played a ton of games that I would have never touched otherwise. There's a lot of solid choices on there, and some of my most recently played ones are World of Warships, Fortnite, Hunt Showdown, and Rainbow Six Siege. And those are just the games that I frequent. There are a ton of games I hop into whenever a friend wants to play that are really popular, such as League of Legends, Apex Legends, Dota. And then there are the new titles that people are getting excited for or hyped about, like Ready or Not, Rainbow Six Extraction, and Dying Light 2. And the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to realize just what a catalog GFN has of top played games. Go look at Steam's top charts, and you'll notice that most of them are available on GeForce Now. Out of the top 25, GeForce Now has access to 15 of those titles, and out of the top 5, it's covered four of them. And it's important to point out that this is sorted by concurrent players. These are the games that people are actively playing at this very moment. And as greedy as this is going to sound, one of my two complaints about GeForce Now is the fact that I wish there were more games on there. Why? Because if I could, I would be playing all my games through GFN. The 3080 tier is simply that good, and I would have loved to play a game like God of War or Monster Hunter Rise on day one. I really hope more publishers hop on board, and I am pretty dumbfounded as to why they're not. After all, their games are being sold on whatever market they chose to already publish their games on, be it Steam, the Epic Game Store, or third-party websites. Speaking of which, it's awesome to take advantage of game deals that happen on each individual storefront. The Epic Holiday Coupon and the Steam Winter Sale were pretty damn good. I think that's enough praise about GFN. You get where my stance is on how I feel about it right now, but like I said earlier, this isn't a perfect service, so let's get to the negatives. And we're gonna start with pricing. The 3080 tier isn't cheap. 
Let's keep it real, $100 for 6 months or $200 for the year? Well, that closes the door for a lot of people, especially when you can't pay month to month. What makes it even harder to justify is that there's really no cheap or free way for you to actually get hands on with the 3080 tier and test it out for yourself. I can sit here all day and record video after video talking about it and praising it for running just as good as my local PC does. But for many people out there, that's not enough, and frankly speaking, I'm one of those people. If I would have heard about it without trying it, I would have really, really doubted the person talking. I think cloud gaming's great, but to be as good as my local hardware, I didn't think the technology was there as of yet. Stadia comes close, but it's not there. To get to the point where cloud gaming is as good right now as it is on GFN, I would have expected to take a few years. I really do hope that at some point, Nvidia can find a way to make the subscription month to month, at least that way there's a cheap way for people to get hands on with it, or better yet, offer some sort of free trial so people can understand what they're paying a premium price for. A lot of people have a hard time justifying the price tag. But for me, after playing it for this long, I think it's well worth it. With the only real caveat here being that you need to make sure the games you want to play are on the service. But that's a statement that rings true with any platform or service that you're considering checking out. The only other real big con I want to mention here is a convenience issue. And it has nothing to do with the benefits of cloud gaming, they're all here. It's more so an issue on the way that GeForce Now works. One of its biggest benefits is being able to use multiple storefronts and your existing library. But along with that benefit comes an issue, and that's having to deal with multiple clients. They have tried updates to make this an easier and smoother way to hop in and out of a game. For example, you can link your Steam account, Epic Games account, and Ubisoft account that should automatically log you in when you boot up a game. But in my case, it seems to be very hit or miss. Oftentimes, I still need to type in my password or use my two-factor authentication to log in every time I boot up. And that becomes a bigger issue when you don't have a keyboard attached to the way you're trying to play. For example, you're trying to play on your TV, don't have a keyboard, well, you better find a way to plug one in to type in your password. And they're probably well aware that these issues exist, otherwise they wouldn't have added these automatic login systems, it's just that they're not always working for me. I've heard some people have a lot of success with them, but for myself, it's always hit or miss. And that simply is the one place where GeForce now lacks behind the other cloud gaming solutions. Hopping in and out of a game does take more time on GFN. To be very clear, I don't think it's a deal breaker, but for some people out there it may very well be. And if I had to compare something like GeForce Now to Google Stadia, GFN is your gaming PC, and along with all the benefits, you have to deal with some of the cons. Stadia on the other hand works exactly like a console, once again with its own pros and cons. But overall, taking everything into account, I think the GeForce Now 3080 tier is well worth it. I wasn't joking at the beginning when I said this is my go-to gaming solution. This is the way I play games now, more so than my local hardware or any of the other cloud gaming services. And if I'm being completely honest, I can't wait for the rest of them to catch up to this level of performance because at that point, I think cloud gaming is more than good enough for the masses. The 3080 tier, to me, is the best proof that cloud gaming works. And heading into 2022, this service is only going to improve and get better. Right now they're testing out Fortnite mobile touch controls just like the mobile market used to have before the giant kerfluffle they had with Google and Apple. But it's simply amazing to see the level of response we're already seeing on Twitter. A lot of people who used to play on mobile Fortnite are absolutely loving the beta test going on. Some even going as far to claim that the latency feels better than when they used to play on their mobile Fortnite app that was dedicated for their phone. And that's more than likely due to the fact that GeForce Now can use all that raw horsepower to power the game, make it look better, and run at a higher frame rate than most phones were able to run at. So just to wrap all of this up, if you really want to check out what the best of the best is in the cloud gaming space, the 3080 tier is where it's at, and I'm more than happy to recommend it. Now if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out and if you're wanting more content like this be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well as always this has been the virtual cloud giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming and vr related and until next time i'll catch you in the clouds